What's up guys, this is HDD Recovery Services. So we got some packages. We're gonna kinda do this every Tuesday, open up some boxes and see what we received. I only got four of them today. And uh, we'll start with this one here. This one comes from Florida. It's probably a memory card. Actually, it's a micro SD card. Very nicely packed. As per my recommendations, it was sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard. Okay, so this is a micro SD card. I'm gonna have to first check if I have a pinout for it or not before I can even begin assessing this thing. So we're gonna set it for, aside for now. Thank you, Raphael, for sending it in. I'll definitely have it checked. Next package on the list. I know who this is. I was told that the dog bit it. I think we should be able to fix it up. Doesn't really look too bad to me actually. We're gonna fix this up right away. That's gonna be first thing on the list. These envelopes dusty I don't know what they use it's like recycled paper on the inside or something oh I know who this is it's an older sand disk 4 gig these cruisers with big controllers like this usually tend to be really tough to work with due to dynamic SOAR or hardware encryption. Hopefully we'll figure this out. And last but not least, it's the biggest box for the day. Well, envelope I should say. I wonder what this is. This is like a... This is a watch box. <laughs> so I'm very excited to find out what's on the inside of it. Is this a watch? Or is this a hard drive? I'm gonna guess it's a hard drive. I haven't recovered watches before. It's a password. <laughs> this one comes from Texas. Thank you, James. Try to get this one done for you. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll get that done if the drive discs are not scratched up yet. I like the packaging. This is really cool. I never got a drive in there. Sequel box before this is cool. That's it for the mail time Tuesday. We're gonna definitely get some stuff done right away. Hopefully we have a donor for a couple of these guys here and uh, get some data recovered. Start with the easiest case today. It's the one with the snapped off connector. Before I get into it, I just wanna quickly inspect everything because there seems to be some sort of uh, green residue around the controller area. Just want to make sure that it's not shorted out or anything like that. Maybe it's corrosion or something similar to this.
is all finished up. Connect one end to the extension cord, computer, the light is flashing and uh, here is the flash drive, came right up, no issues, all of the data as you can see is inside. That's case number one. So I just did some digging about this specific controller. There are solutions. Uh, whether or not this memory is encrypted, it really uh, is like a chance thing. This controller is highly used on um, older cases and uh, those are either tend to be fairly simple uh, to recover off the chip or uh, they're non-recoverable at all. I've inspected the whole thing up. Doesn't look like this unit has a bad connector. Connector is fully attached. Uh, the problem is is that we plug it in, LED blinks once, and then that's it. I only have about 15 minutes for the rest of the day, so I'm going to pull the chip off. I'm uh, going to set it up. It's only 4 gigs, so it will read fast. And without losing any more time, let's jump straight to it and begin desoldering. just read the content of the chip let's see if the mix that we already had in the database will work um, we're not able to see the structure using this tool but through our studio I think we can mount uh, the image that we're saving right now and uh, if uh, we can find the structure in that image then the job is done. back uh, we got to carry on with the cases that I received yesterday and uh, we got the 16 uh, gigabyte micro SD card because these units don't have external memory components at times it can be very difficult especially if you don't have a pinout uh, for uh, for the test points to attach an adapter to first things first we have to make sure that the controller is not shorted on this if you look at the interface uh, at these golden pads at the back of the unit uh, two of them will be slightly taller. That's your VCC and VSS pads. Uh, with help of uh, multimeter and uh, continuity test on it, uh, we can check if they're shorted or not. This is my multimeter. This mode here is for continuity. It doesn't matter which pro goes on which channel. When the sound occurs, that means um, there is a short. The contacts are touching each other. So the reading is 1.258. The controller is not shorted out. Three 
out of four things that we got yesterday are done. We can't get anything done with that micro SD card, unfortunately. However, we got one more case that we got to do and it's uh, Western Digital Passport. I'll uh, basically show you guys a couple of things that I use on a daily uh, basis uh, to get these things going. Again, it does require some serious tools, so it's not really a do-it-yourself type of project. We don't actually just do the repair on the device because slow response is an evident sign of dying hard drive. Uh, once the drive gets a slow response activated on it, that means that drive is slowly dying. Even if we take care of the slow response right away, uh, the drive may work for a couple of weeks, but then it will crash again and it will crash seriously because usually uh, the whole process begins to grow from one failing head. And once that head is completely unresponsive, then the data will be locked up on it until the head replacement is performed. Let's uh, get it checked out. This is a Western Digital Passport, as I said. I got my uh, MacBook Pro. I'm just going to connect it here. The drive spins up, calibrates and it stays spinning. I don't know if you can see the in the devices. Or in the disk utility. It shows up that it's searching for the drive because it sees that something is plugged in but it's not detecting it I get this uh, disk inserted it was not readable by this computer uh, information I'm gonna go hit ignore there's our Western Digital it detects that it's got two terabytes of capacity on it but uh, it doesn't give us any partitions that are visible so you can see how long this is taking. It really is uh, an identification of a slow response on the Western Digital Drive. This should be instant. Like uh, if we unplug this drive, our studio will come up right away. And uh, there's really no point in forcing this drive to work uh, with the unit uh, further until the slow response is taken care of. So as soon as I unplug this, you see that it comes up. Okay, it comes up. It actually does determine that it's got a partition, but it doesn't see what type of partition it has. It just says USB, passport, two terabyte, and partition one. But it does not see what type of partition it has, so it can't recognize the formatting. In order for us to get this done, um, there are a couple of ways to, to get it done, actually. Uh, the way that I prefer to use is to swap out the board for... Uh, uh, a SATA compatible uh, unit in order to get rid of the slow response on it. So this drive uh, is in this plastic enclosure. This top portion mates to the bottom por portion just with simple clips. So uh, usually just find a point where I can squeeze a tiny uh, flat headed screwdriver in and uh, pry it apart and the thing comes apart fairly easily once it's lift it a little bit it's just a matter of going around the perimeter and slowly popping these clips it's got a proprietary USB 3.0 interface as opposed to um, SATA interface which can be found on many laptop hard drives. And the U13 position on this unit is right here. This is the small um, eight-legged component is what has the firmware that is uh, needs to be paired up with this specific hard drive.
With this PCB, now we will be able to connect this drive to PC3000 and work with it as if this was a regular Shrek LT hard drive. Remove the slow response and this drive should begin working again. What we may find is that one of the heads or maybe more than one of the heads is not reading at this point, but hopefully we don't have to deal with that and uh, we should be able to recover data from it in this condition without head replacement. Alright, so the drive came up ready. I'm gonna have a look at the 30 second pin module. Just to see if it's got any excessive entries in it. Okay, so anything past the header is not needed in this entry, in this drive. We're gonna save this module. Module 32 for the client. And then we're gonna go into one of the options in this tool and remove slow response read by ID and block the Rello list okay now we have to turn the power off turn it back on just gonna make sure that it can read going into sector edit the drive is not encrypted so we can just actually begin imaging it the way it is it has full access to the information even if we're interested in this we can run quick quick express test just to make sure that you know all heads are responsive so it's almost at 2 million it's an 8 headed drive so I'm gonna let it run to like 6 million and if it's all consistent and green as it is right now this drive is good to go it's only it only had a slow response on it so the process is as usual we build a head map begin imaging the case we determine which head uh, has weakness we disable it uh, work with the good remaining heads then turn the failing head back on and see if we can capture what we're missing from the data that is most important to the client if that works we got it so that case I'm gonna consider it solved for now unless we run into any issues if we run into any issues during the disk imaging I'll add it to the video otherwise I'm just gonna have to monitor it for a couple hours client said that there's about 50 gigs of data on there so that shouldn't take me too long to image out and uh, yeah that's it for the four cases that we received this has uh, been a pretty good turnout three out of four and only one that we couldn't solve and that was due to a schematic that we don't have uh, you, I can't blame myself for it it's not available right now so my hands are tied this is gonna be like a vlog thing so I'm, I'm not gonna be able to film these uh, on daily basis because uh, it's taking away a lot of my time to film uh, to set everything up concentrate on what I'm saying because like when I work here in the lab I'm not talking to the camera I'm not talking to anybody really I just do my work and monitor it but with this filming I do have to take away some of my time that I spend towards making these videos and uh, doing this every day will be just very difficult for me at least for now I'm gonna work towards maybe improving on that front that being said uh, at least once or twice a week I'm gonna make like a bulk video where we got several cases and we're gonna just crunch through them and see what's uh, happening uh, yeah as always if you have any questions post them in the comments below uh, this presentation was pretty basic this is like the kind of stuff that we receive on day-to-day -day basis you know Western digital passports some flash drives some memory cards that's that kind of stuff so uh, hit like subscribe to this channel if you haven't already I really hope that you liked what you just saw um and uh yeah if uh, you guys have a drive or any other type of digital media device 
uh, that had failed that needs data recovered off of, uh, feel free to hit us up. Contact information is on the screen. Give us a shout. Thank you very much. See you next time.